Hello, this is Dr. Snootopia. This is Tucson, Arizona. The date is January 18th, 2016. This is Martin Luther King Jr.'s national hol holiday. To celebrate it, and why I feel the obligation to celebrate it, is because I was raised in the South I lived through the civil rights movement and desegregation of the school systems. And I know as a witness how much struggle it took for black people to get some rights in this country. So I got on my bike this morning, went down part of the bike trail to Reed Park where they were celebrating. And before I got there, I cut over to Broadway uh, before I got to Reed Park. I was crossing the street and I had just gotten up onto the side of the road, which did not have a pedestrian sidewalk. And I'm walking my bike because I thought it was too dangerous to ride on the road. I hear a crash in back of me. For a nanosecond, I thought to myself, do I want to be killed today? And if so, just walk slowly. And if not, lay down my bike and run like hell. I just been to a life force yoga training and I decided that it is better to live so I threw down my bike and ran like hell I did not look back until I thought it was safe when I when I looked back my bike and the car which happened to be a Cadillac were both of the tires were touching each other like this I was having some sort of out-of-body experience at that moment between life and death. I decided to do the yoga uh, breathing to calm myself, to center myself. And then I realized that there were some injured people in the car that was touching my bike. So I went up to the window and the driver wasn't injured, but the passenger was. And she was a white uh, female, young, uh, well, in her 20s or 30s. And uh, then there were three Mexicans from the other car that was in the crash who came uh, down and, start, and sat down on the, uh, the curb. I started breathing with the lady, inviting her to move deeply into her breath to uh, control the pain that she was feeling and I calmly breathed with her. By that time somebody had called 911 and the police were coming and also an emergency uh, medical team was on the way. The Mexicans were also injured uh, one of them had hurt his knee, had bumped it in the wreck. Uh, another one, the woman involved, uh, she was uh, 33. I found out later that she was unemployed, had just moved to Tucson from Mesa. And then another younger fellow who was in Pima College, was from Sonora, Mexico, and was living here uh, uh, illegally. He was uh, injured. He had a nosebleed, concussion, headache, felt like um, vomiting, and he said that his pain was uh, severe. They were working on the woman in the car, and uh, finally we said, well, why don't you give some attention to the man who is um, with the concussion? Uh, and they, medical, um, officers said that they would have to, he would have to wait for attention 
uh, that they were working on the woman now, and, and she came before he did. Um, so then, uh, finally, they did come over to look at him, and then he was in agony deciding what to do. Since he is illegal here, he did not have health insurance, and um, he didn't want to be sent back to Mexico. Finally, his cousin, who was driving the car, talked him into seeking medical help since uh, the medical um, EMT said that his injury could cause him to be um, paralyzed or something else if he uh, moved in a wrong way or whatever. So they uh, did finally put him on a gurney and uh, take him to a hospital or so we thought. Uh, they would not tell his cousin which hospital they had sent him to. Um, I watched um, them also uh, then after that arrest the uh, driver of the car um, and because he had some kind of outstanding warrant. The uh, female in the wreck, the Mexican lady, um, she didn't have, it was her sister's car. Um, the car was totaled. She didn't have a way back. She had no cell phone. And so I gave her $2 to take a bus back after her car had been towed. Um, I was told that I could not uh, take photographs of the um, injured. And um, I said, well, I'm on a public street and I should be able to record this, but they advised against it. Uh, one of the um, uh, emergency medical technicians uh, was um, very rude to me about this and said I was breaking the law in order to, uh, or, or to document it. Um, I did tell him that I thought he was really being uptight, which he got really mad when I said that. Uh, and that was uh, a tall white guy about my age. So it was kind of this uh, real uh, power struggle that didn't need to happen at that particular moment. Um, so I was saved. And uh, if I hadn't listened to that intuition inside me to tell me to run like hell, I might not be telling you this story. But I did watch several lives unravel um, at the time uh, uh, today. And I saw discrimination, international discrimination. When are we going to learn that we need universal health care worldwide? We talk about national health care. But really what needs to happen is that everyone in the world needs to be able to have health care, to go to a hospital in an emergency. We live in a planetary society, and we've got to understand that. And today I really saw it. I really saw um, how important it is for the spirit of Martin Luther King to be alive and for us to live uh, with the principles of universal human rights. And as a witness to um, inhumanity, uh, it's traumatizing. It's traumatizing to live in this kind of culture where you're just walking your bike on the side of the road and you nearly get killed. When are we going to stop the insanity? When are we going to go beyond the automobile culture and start living in peace with nature? Thank you.